Let's get straight to it. No fluff. The U.S. power grid is cracking under pressure. Right now, the Department of Energy reports that electricity demand is expected to surge 15-20% by 2026, driven by AI data centers, EV charging, and record population growth across the South and West. But the supply side? It's collapsing. We've lost more than 80 gigawatts of firm generation capacity since 2015. That's the equivalent of shutting down every power plant in Texas twice. Meanwhile, over 70% of the nation's transmission lines are more than 25 years old, operating well past their designed lifespan. And the grid can't take the heat, literally. The summer of 2024 set a record for power demand across 20 states, and grid operators issued over 1,200 emergency alerts, triple the number from 2019. According to NERSI's latest reliability report, two-thirds of the country faces elevated to high blackout risk through 2025. That's not internet gossip. That's from the agency tasked with keeping the lights on. So if you think rolling blackouts are just a California thing, think again. The data shows the threat has gone national, and the failures are starting where the grid is weakest. Let's break down the top 10 states that could go dark by the end of 2025, starting from number 10, because some of these are places you'd never expect to see the lights go out. 10. Louisiana You may think of Louisiana and immediately picture hurricanes, and, and yes, that's part of it. But the deeper problem lies in generation vulnerabilities and industrial-scale dependencies that most people never see. Louisiana's grid is, in effect, built on shaky ground. Many natural gas-fired plants sit in flood-prone zones, salt-air coastal regions corrode equipment, and the heat-humidity combo accelerates aging of transformers and substations. The state also hosts massive industrial consumers, petrochemical complexes, refineries, chemical plants, facilities which need monstrous amounts of uninterrupted power to keep running. If a major generating station gets hit by storm surge and the transmission lines get coated in salt, the entire region is at risk of cascading failure. Industrial shutdowns trigger supply chain cuts which degrade power plant operations, which then force broader outages. After Hurricane Ida, some areas were out for weeks not because wires were down, but because the generating facility itself was swamped and unrepairable for days. Meanwhile, summer peak load demand from air conditioning is only going up and replacement capacity is sluggish. Add to that a transmission system that is decades old and not designed for the current industrial load plus future growth, and you've got a state very close to the edge. Louisiana may not make headlines for blackouts now, but it is primed for one. 9. Illinois, Illinois is a textbook example of demand growing while baseline supply is shrinking, and that's a dangerous e equation. Chicago alone consumes more electricity than many entire states. Yet Illinois has been systematically retiring coal-fired units and planning multiple nuclear retirements without having fully lined up adequate replacements. Meanwhile, the state is banking heavily on wind power in rural zones, but the transmission infrastructure to bring that power into Chicago is overloaded and vulnerable. Throw in polar vortex events, they happen in the Midwest. When natural gas pipelines get strained for heating demand and gas-fired generators can't access fuel, and you've got simultaneous failures. Generation underperforming plus transmission bottlenecks plus surging load. Then you layer on cyber vulnerability, major financial hub, lots of wired infrastructure. A coordinated cyber attack during a winter outbreak could take down a major chunk of the grid. And the hidden part, many local utilities admit privately that their reserve margins, extra capacity beyond expected peak demand, are slimmer than they want to broadcast because building new capacity is expensive and politically fraught. Illinois is very much a why-won't-we-go-dark-sooner-than-later state. 8. Massachusetts. New England's reliability worries are well known among insiders, but Massachusetts is especially precarious for reasons you might miss if you only hear about renewables. First, the state shut down coal and nuclear plants and has constrained natural gas pipeline expansions for environmental reasons. That leaves it heavily dependent on imported liquefied natural gas, LNG, and renewables. 
When an ice storm whacks the supply chain for LNG or delays shipments, when offshore wind transmission cables get damaged, they've shown repeatedly how vulnerable they are, the fallback is shaky. The grid operator has issued warnings about tight fuel supply during cold snaps and stated that rotating brownouts are on the table if things degrade. Add in rapidly growing demand, Massachusetts is pushing for more electric vehicles, more electric heating systems, and yet much of the distribution infrastructure, local lines, transformers, neighborhood substations, isn't being upgraded fast enough. The combination of aging local hardware, restricted fuel options, and big load growth makes Massachusetts more likely to experience an outage than people realize. And an outage here would hit critical infrastructure hard. 7. New York with New York, don't just think NYC, think statewide. You're looking at one of the densest electricity demand footprints in the U.S., a major cutback of nuclear generation, for instance, the shutdown of Indian Point Energy Center, which used to reliably provide massive baseline power and a transmission system that's already operating near its limits. One significant failure in a critical transmission corridor, say through the Hudson Valley, would immediately threaten major outages because redundancy is minimal. The E? Danger is not a slow fade, but a sudden collapse. Demand spikes in heat waves as city air conditioning systems go full tilt. Underground cables in NYC overheat. Adjacent lines drop out. The system loses stability. Add in extreme weather events. Heat domes, ice storms, heavy rainfall flooding substations, and the potential for cascading failure is real. The state grid operator has warned of reliability shortfalls in the near future due to retirements and transmission constraints. And yet, most residents are blissfully unaware. In effect, New York is one wrong combination of demand surge plus infrastructure failure plus weather event away from a regional blackout that could last days. If you live in or near NYC or the suburbs and you haven't considered this, now's the time. 6. Florida When we say Florida, hurricanes immediately come to mind. They are the catalyst, yes, but not the root cause. Florida's real grid vulnerability comes from explosive population growth, rapid load increases, and aging generation and transmission infrastructure that simply isn't scaled for what's coming. Florida adds thousands of residents every month, each one plugging in pool pumps, air conditioners, EV chargers, big screen TVs. Combine that with salt-laden coastal air that corrodes outdoor electrical equipment faster than inland zones, heat and humidity that throttle transformer efficiency, and major reliance on natural gas generation whose supply pipelines traverse vulnerable regions. Hurricanes can knock down lines, but even when transmission is intact, generation can be knocked out because gas compressors stop, pipelines flood, plants are offline, and then you get extended outages that are generation-side failures, not just local line faults. Plus, the cybersecurity threat is considerable. The state has many military installations, critical infrastructure nodes, big airports, appealing targets. A coordinated cyber-physical attack during hurricane season could convert a manageable outage into a catastrophic extended blackout. Florida's grid may appear resilient on the surface, but if you dig into the numbers, load growth outpacing capacity additions, infrastructure lifespans being pushed beyond safe limits, you find a ticking timer. If you're in Florida and you haven't prepared, you likely will regret it when the lights don't come back on. 5. Arizona. Picture this, a desert state where summer temperatures regularly top 115 degrees CF, millions of newly arrived residents, and air conditioning that literally becomes a matter of life or death. Your utilities know this, yet the system is being stretched like never before. Arizona's iconic Palo Verde nuclear generating station supplies a huge chunk of the state's power, but there's a hidden Achilles heel. It relies on treated wastewater from Phoenix for its cooling system. A prolonged drought or interruption in that water supply? That's a potential shutdown of 2,000 plus MW of baseline generation just when demand peaks. 
On top of that, while Arizona hammers solar as the big solution, which makes sense in the desert, high temperature performance of photovoltaic panels drops significantly. When it's 115 degree gauss, panel efficiency has already slid to yamrin 70% of optimum. That means when you need that sun the most, you get less than expected. The transmission lines themselves, many built in the 1960s and 70s, literally cooking in the desert sun, gradually degrading. Maintenance budgets are tight, upgrades limited. You get a perfect storm. Peak heat causing massive demand spikes, solar underperforming, aging lines breaking down, and a generation station vulnerable to water supply interruptions. That's not speculation, it's structural weakness. If you're living in Arizona and haven't considered a multi-day outage during a heat wave, you're behind. 4. North Carolina When people think of robust grid states, North Carolina doesn't usually pop up. But here's why it should freak you out. The state has shut down multiple coal plants in recent years, pivoting to natural gas and solar, but without matching capacity growth to keep up with demand. The major utility, Duke Energy, has repeatedly warned that pipeline capacity for natural gas generation is simply inadequate for peak loads. One major pipeline disruption or weather event, and the state is one step from rotating blackouts. Compounding this, physical security threats. Remember the December 2022 attack in Moore County, where two substations were disabled by rifle fire, knocking out power to 45,000 people for days? That shows the grid here isn't just vulnerable to storms, it's vulnerable to human attack. Then consider that hurricanes and tropical storms are strengthening and are penetrating farther inland than before, flooding substations that were never built for that level of inundation. So you've got lines and substations built for old normal weather, loads increasing via EV charging and data center expansion, gas capacity strained, and threats from both nature and man. North Carolina isn't just on the edge, it's leaning over it. 3. Texas. This one could easily be number one, because the state is literally built on grid fragility. The Electric Reliability Council of Texas, Arcot runs an almost completely self-contained grid, which means when things go wrong, there's no external region to borrow power from. We all saw the disaster during the February 2021 winter storm. More than 4 million homes and businesses without power, some for days. Pipes froze, people died. But here's the kicker. The underlying conditions haven't been fixed fast enough. Demand continues to surge. Data centers, crypto mining, and electric vehicles are new load fighters, while reserve margins remain razor thin. Transmission imports and external strengthening are minimal because the grid is isolated. Add to that natural gas generation plants that weren't winterized for extreme cold or summer super peak load, and you have a system that runs on a razor thin margin. Texas also has explosive population growth in metro areas. Houston, Dallas, Austin, bringing millions of new electric loads while the infrastructure doesn't advance at the same pace. One heat wave, one failure, one major pipeline disruption, and boom. And because it's Texas, the political pressure and regulatory complexity make big upgrades slow. If the grid collapses in Texas, it won't just be local, it will ripple. 2. New York don't just think about Manhattan or the city lights. New York State is one of those regions that's quietly being set up for a serious failure. New York's grid operator, New York Independent System Operator, NYSO, has repeatedly flagged narrowing reliability margins. The retirement of conventional baseload plants, natural gas plus nuclear, is outpacing the installation of truly firm replacements. At the same time, demand is rising rapidly thanks to building electrification, EVs, data centers, semiconductor manufacturing and such, a projected rise of 12% in peak demand over the next decade. What most people don't grasp, New York is shifting from summer peaking demand to winter peaking thanks to electric heating systems replacing fossil fuel furnaces. That means when the cold hits, loads go up and fuel delivery for gas-fired generators may be constrained. Nuso says fuel access during peak cold could cause deficiencies by 2029-30 if nothing changes. 
add in transmission delays, major projects like the Champlain Hudson Power Express, which would bring hydropower from Canada, are slated for 2026 and beyond. If they're delayed, the grid loses a major safety valve. Plus, the state's aggressive green mandates require shutting down fossil units, even though the replacement capacity is uncertain. NISO warns that asking intermittent wind solar to replace firm dispatchable units too fast is asking for trouble. So yes, the lights could go out in New York. And given the density of population, interconnections, critical infrastructure, financial centers, transportation hubs, the consequences would be enormous. If you're in that state or have business relatives there, you need to plan for a blackout scenario now. 1. California this one is number one for a reason. California is marching full steam ahead into grid risk territory. And unlike states where you think, maybe, here the vulnerabilities are glaring. First off, the state's grid is under extreme pressure from climate, infrastructure, aging, and policy transitions. According to the California Energy Commission, the grid is facing tight electricity conditions during summer months for the next several years. Wildfire Risk and Public Safety Shutoffs, PSPS. On hot, dry, windy days, the utility may proactively cut power to prevent fires. This isn't a brief flicker. In August 2025, a PSPS event shut off power for multiple days in Southern California just because the risk of ignition via transmission line fault was judged too high. Then there's generation and baseload issues. The state is shutting reliable plants, e.g. nuclear, certain gas plants, while counting on renewables and storage that in heavy demand or bad weather may not perform. Example, Diablo Canyon Power Plant, the state's last large nuclear station, faces closure plans and its loss would remove a huge chunk of dispatchable power. Also, drought has slashed hydropower capacity in the state, meaning during heat waves, the fallback options are thinner than they used to be. Equipment age and extreme climate. Transformers, transmission lines, substations built decades ago are operating in more extreme heat, more fire risk, more storm risk. The more you push a system beyond its design envelope, the higher the chance something breaks when you least want it to. If you combine these, rising demand, EVs, electrification of heating or cooling data centers, less reliable baseline supply, increased risk of forced outages, PSPS or generation collapse, and aging infrastructure. You have a state very likely to face a multi-day blackout scenario by end of 2025. If you live in California or have assets there, this is your yellow alert. Prep now.